Hey everybody, it's Robert. Uh, today I'm going to do a video a little different than what I've been doing. Um, a couple weeks ago, a uh, friend I made last year got a hold of me, went fishing a few times, and he said, hey, can you teach me how to make the worm harnesses you make? So I said, yeah. So, a little backstory. I met Bob last year at a boat ramp. He came in from jigging, him and his wife, and uh, we got talking. And I uh, didn't even have my boat with me at the time. We started talking about trolling and stuff like that. Um, we troll a lot here on Lake Erie. I like the jig bite, but sometimes it's nice just to go out and troll. So, um, we became friends, started talking back and forth. He said, Hey, I just bought this new boat. We only jig. I want to get into trolling. Um, can you teach me how to troll? So a couple months later, uh, we got together, went out on his boat. Um, he had outfitted it for trolling, some trolling trees some trolling rods and such. And Basically, I took a tackle box full of my planer boards, um, some worm harnesses, some offshore tadpole weights, and we went out and we caught a bunch of fish, and it's just awesome to see somebody just happy, learning something new, and reeling in fish on their new boat. So I was uh, felt pretty blessed to have that opportunity, and made a pretty good friend with all the coronavirus stuff going on right now, we haven't been able to get together to tie worm harnesses. So I was sitting here in my office today, finally got it cleaned out enough where I can do stuff in here. <clears throat> and I was tying some worm harnesses and I was like, I might as well make a video for Bob. So Bob, this video is for you. So starting out, some guys will use floral leaders, a little bit of everything. For my worm harnesses, I like to use this trilene XT, extra tough. I like to use a 20 pound mono for my worm harnesses. I make them all the way from single hook casting rigs, um, where you put an egg sinker on the top, cast, reel in. I was making some shorter ones for my bottom bouncers, and I was making some pretty long ones for just open water trolling behind boards. I kind of condense those two. I keep hundreds of these pre tied at all times in my boat. So I found out that the, you're hooking them to a main line anyways. I did not find a difference between running a 60 inch versus a 40 inch um, or a 36 inch for bottom bouncers. So I've kind of settled on one length for all of mine. Well, I shouldn't say all of them. For trolling behind big boards, small boards, or bottom bouncers, I've pretty much been tying them between 44 and 48 inches. And that's kind of been the sweet spot for me. So I no longer have to search through my binder, <clears throat> excuse me, to see what size do I need. Or I was running into the problem where they'd be hitting on a color really good off bottom bouncers. And then the only ones I had tied like that were long. And granted, I could cut them and tie them on the boat, but it just got to be a hassle. So I now make two lengths. I make a shorter one for casting, but all of the worm harnesses I make for trolling are all between 44 and 48 inches. So, main thing, trialing extra tough, 20 pound. Next thing I use, hooks are pretty important. I have found that size two is my go-to hook size. Um, these are the Eagle Claw Needlepoint. I think that's important. These things are just super tacky, extra sharp. These are the L2 Needlepoint, um, long shank, all purpose. <clears throat> I bought a bunch in black and red, found them on sale, so I just stocked up and bought like a thousand of them. Um, pretty nice hook. Like I said, they are super sharp. I don't know if the red versus black makes a difference, but um, they're just offset a little bit. It's a good hook. Next, I bet 95%, maybe 90% of the worm harnesses I tie, I use size 5 blades. Um, and anybody who is into worm harnesses, you know that there are thousands, if not tens of thousands of blades, um, from just your simple painted white back, simple design. I think that's a Bass Pro. Then you're getting into your, more your custom painted. Um, these are more the dimple. I like the copper backs a lot. Um, let's see what else do we have here. Got some silver backs. These are kind of cool. These are just kind of a 3D image on them. 
And then anything you can think of, like father-in-law gave me some of these brass ones that are just a ripple design. And I'm sure they all give off different things in the water. Um, but I really like the brass backs, and I really like the pink black backs. The other color I like that I do not have laying around here is, there's some other ones I tied up. I, this green on here, they make one where that back is that green. This is actually a copper. I really like that green. I believe they call antifreeze back. has been really good. This is a really good color. This is called mixed veggies. And as you can see, I got a couple of those here. These are actually ones in my hand that if I use them, I don't retire them all the time. I keep some money in my boat. And then in the slow time of year or right now, coronavirus can't leave the house i cut them all apart put the beads all away and then just start retying them so um those are pretty popular ones so we got the line covered we got the hooks covered next things is beads so you can never have too many beads um these are all just faceted beads which means they're not round grab a black one here you can see these are just kind of got little edges on them. They're not a round bead. Like that's why they call them faceted. Um, do I believe blades make a huge difference? No. Um, I think colors are more for the person that's tying them. I have literally let my five-year-old pick out random colors and random blades, tie them, and I've caught walleye on them. But uh, I don't use the faceted a whole lot. And then here is just a lot of other beads. I like five millimeter beads. They seem to work fine. And like I said, 90% of what I tie are size five blades. I will go to size six. Um, here is a size six uh, that somebody gave me as a custom one. It's got some like hollow foil paper on it and then they paint it on top of it. But there's a size six versus a size five so it's not a huge difference put them inside each other here both copper backs but there is a difference there um size wise i will rarely go down to size four actually i bought a bunch on accident and i've had luck with those early season when the water's still cold so back to what we're talking about line hooks beads now let's get started. So, first thing I want to do is I like to take, you know, I'll get it measured out. My old table, I actually had marks on it, so I knew exactly if I cut it at this length, you're going to lose some length when you're tying your two snells and your end knot. Um, I knew exactly what would get me down. Here I'm still trying to figure out. This is kind of a new office desk we just bought for this room. But I found out that if I start at one end of the table... Go to the other end of the table and then add about a foot on. Oops, can't grab onto the line today. So that's the end of the table. I'm going to add about 12 inches onto that. So it's not quite a full arm's length. That works for me. So, turn you down here a little bit and we'll uh, show you what we're doing. So, I have no idea where my scissors went, but those always work. First thing we're gonna do is we'll just grab a black hook, beans I gotta pack out here. Here's the hook. You're gonna go from the top side of the hook down through the eye. Kinda hard to do it in front of a camera here. You got that tag in there. Grab that tag in, and you can do anywhere from, I've seen guys do five, six, 10, 12 wraps. I usually do eight or nine, just seems to work well for me. So. Tag line through the top of the hook. We're going to wrap it nine times. Kind of weird kind of holding up in front of me there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then you're going to pinch that. So I start at the top, wound down. I'm going to hold that there. I'm going to go back. I'm going to find my long tag end. And I'm going to feed that back through, where are we at here? I'm gonna feed that back through going the opposite direction. So I initially stuck in that way, pinched it, took the tag in, wrapped nine, 
Now I'm holding it, pulling it through. And then just grab the hook, pull tight. That's what we got. Then you can go back through and cut that tag end off. So here's where I see a lot of people get hung up on it. You know, getting it perfect where every single worm harness has hooks exactly the same distance apart. Now I can get pretty close, usually within, I want to say an eighth of an inch, just by coming up with my own thing. So second hook, this is the long tag end here, hooks down off that end. Second hook, grab the line, same thing, feed through the bottom of the hook. So what I do here is I grab that hook, grab it on the shank, and I know that if I hold it like that, my finger's even, and I pull that up to just where that hook is just below my pinky, or actually touching, that that is a perfect distance for me, find the camera here. It's about three inches apart. So, while I got that pinched, same thing. Pinch that, wrap nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Up, pinch. Go find your long tag end here. And then, your same thing, you're going back through that way of the hook there. Pull through. Grab the hook, pull that tight, and there we have it. Two hooks, a couple inches apart, about three inches apart, and that's what we want. So now comes the fun part. Lay those on the table, and we are going to pick a blade. Um, might as well do this one, this is a good color. I forgot the name of this. It's kind of like a Wonder Bread pattern, but it's not. And I'm not even sure who made this one. But, so that's the blade we're going to use. We'll lay this right here. I like to find colors that at least kind of go with it. So, let's see. Out of these, we got some orange, blue, and pink. And it really doesn't matter, but like I said, sometimes it'll get in your head that one is one color sitting better than the other one. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do... I'm going to do a couple pinks. Now, on these size blades, I always do seven five millimeter beads. That gives me enough clearance from my blade. Even if I take this one and I switch out the blade and go bigger, smaller, I'm still not going to have interference with that. So, I'm going to do two pinks. Um, we'll do got some blues here. I'm kind of running low on some beads here. We'll do uh, three blues. We'll do two more pinks just for the hell of it. And they are close here. <clears throat> so that's what we have so far. Oh, that was almost a mess. That's what we have so far. Seven beads. So what you would usually do is you buy your clevises. I like the plastic quick change clevises. I uh, have good luck with those. I had some steel ones. I feel like they can, depending on the manufacturer, they can kind of rub through this line a little bit. So you put your clevis on, big end first. There's a big end, there's an open end at the top. So put the big end on first. But since I already have it on the blade, I will just thread it on through that. So that's what we're working with right now. See the open edges at the top. We're going to just slide that through like that. Now, a lot of guys or ones you can buy, they will be done just like that. I don't know why I do it, but I do it and I've had good luck with it. I will put a bead in front of that clevis. And usually, for some reason, this is just kind of my thing. Some other guys do it. I don't know why. It probably doesn't make any doesn't matter one way or another. I will usually put a different color bead at the front. I've heard where you know sometimes a fish will concentrate on that. They think it's the eye of whatever they're about to eat. 
So we'll go a little crazy on that. Um, yeah, there's some yellow dots in this. So we'll just do a yellow one for, why not? So that is your worm harness. Get cut up, try and hold this here. So we got some orange, we got some white, we got some blue, some pink in there. So I think that's a pretty good looking, you know, when they're going through the water, they're spinning pretty quick. And you know, the fish usually seem from the back most. So I don't even know if the colors on the front matter, but like I said, fishermen don't buy different color lures for fish. They buy them because they think they look good. So on your other end here, there's a number of knots you can make. I like to just keep it simple, stupid. So I'll take a pretty big tag loop there and just make one overhand knot. So just an overhand. And then I will stick it back through. So basically you're doing a double overhand. I'll lick that, keep that wet. I'll pull that tight. Usually what I'll do here is I will pull on those two. I'll put the tag in my teeth, pull it tight all the way around. I have no idea where my scissors went. There's a five year old who's not in school right now. So some things are getting stolen out of my office. I'll clip that tag end off and I will clip this other tag end off. Actually, these are used to cut guitar strings, so they're not as sharp as. And there you have it. So, the last question is a lot of people say, How do you store these things? I've come up with a very simple solution. I buy a plastics binder, like most guys keep their swim baits and their soft baits. And to keep them from getting tangled, I go and buy these craft bags. I buy so many at a time, I swear the lady at Walmart thinks I'm a drug dealer. But I think these are the 2 by 3 size. So what I do is I will just uh, grab the bottom hook, make sure it doesn't get stuck in your finger. And I will just start wrapping. And when you pull them out of the bag, if you keep the line on the same side and you pull them out of the bag... You can grab them by the tag end, let them go, and they'll fall free. But I never have a problem with big tangles. Just like that. Pop them in the bag here. Drop them on in there. And there you have it. So that's one worm harness tied. Um, I'll sit here with the TV on, listen to the TV, and I will just knock these out. As you can see... Um, started some yesterday and just start hanging them there for now. And, you know, it's pretty quick to add all these up. You will go through a lot. You got four or five guys on your boat. Um, if I catch a couple on a fish, I'll usually retire it just because I've never had, I've never lost a worm harness by having it break. But if we spend a good afternoon with one, I'll take them out. I have a huge gallon Ziploc bag in my glove box of my boat. I will take them out. I'll throw them in there. <clears throat> and then I'll usually retie those right away. You'll find out that some just some just hit. Um, last year, I think I, I, got, I think I tied one up here earlier. For some reason, this, anything on purple on it, I'm going to call it here. Anything with purple on it was hot. It's purple and black with a pink back. Um, that's just the color of those beads. That's been hot. And these mixed veggies, I believe they call something vegetables, have been hot too. And sometimes I'll do that. I'll do most of the beads. One bead down, I'll add a different color. Just kind of match whatever I'm doing. Like I said, I don't think beads matter as much as a lot of people think, but... That's it. I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, my boat is not at this house yet. We still need to build a pole barn. So both my boats are kept at my dad's farm and his big pole barn. So um, still working right now. Got a stomach, well, upper respiratory bug last week was not good. So I was home for seven days. Everybody thinks it'd be fun to stay home from work for seven days, but no. Especially my wife and daughter are home. 
Um, everyone's just getting a little antsy because we are not a family that stays home very often. So um, if this stuff keeps up, I have to run to my dad's anyways, get some horse food this week. So maybe I'll shoot a quick video how I store all this stuff in my boat. But thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, shoot me a message. And Bob, I hope you and your wife and your family are staying safe. Uh, hopefully when this is all over, we can get out and do some fishing, man. I miss you. And hope everybody's being safe. Thanks.